Thank you, Harriet. Good morning. morning. It's nice to have you here. This is the uh, Sunday after Easter. If you weren't aware of that, just look around, look at the empty seats, and then you'll know. (laughs) Before I get started, uh, we've had for a couple of, uh, I guess a couple of weeks, we've had these keys over in the infant toddler pantry. Do these belong to anybody? What's that? They might be yours? Title. Are they yours? Uh, yes. Looks like a, a mailbox key. And... Okay, just a couple of quick announcements as we get started today. Uh, how many of you saw the Daily Sun this week? We had a nice article about His Majesty, our music director. Why was there no picture of you? We were all disappointed. So was I. How, how did... <laughs> are you going to do the class again? Or? Yes, the class is held three times. Uh, the next time is May something or other night. Uh, something, I don't know. And but, the other one is September. You have to check with the, the enrichment account. The enrichment. I see. Okay. You know, every time you and I do something like this, I get all kinds of notes from the people that are watching online because they can't hear you. Oh. And, I, and I say, well, feel good because we can. <laughs> okay. A couple of quick things coming up uh, in the near future. And uh, uh, this is the last Sunday in the month of April. <laughs> Where is the year going? Uh, this is your last Sunday to support the uh, mission for the month, which is the Christian Care Center at First Baptist Church down in Leesburg. Uh, Early in the month, we had a representative come and speak to us about all the various many-faceted ministries that go on there, and it's an amazing, wonderful thing. We were able to give them a check for $1,200 to help them. I wish it could be more, but uh, we're we're thrilled that our little church can do that. Uh, So thank you so much for your support. Anything that goes today will still... Uh, go toward that. So thanks for supporting the, uh, the, May mis- the April mission. Next Sunday, we start with May. Uh, also, the beautiful alder flowers on the altar today. Uh, my good friends Gil and Libby Regan are having an uh, anniversary, the 18th anniversary. Happy anniversary, Gil and Libby. And uh, my dear wife Dawn is uh, last Sunday, and she wouldn't let me do it on Easter, but we'll do it today. The uh, centerpiece on the altar is there uh, in celebration of some anniversary of her 39th birthday. I'm not sure which one it is. (laughs) So happy birthday to Dawn. I, uh, I wish her very, 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 very many more, because if she was not with me, I'd have to do all this work myself, so she's my, my helper. Um, also, I want to uh, thank all of you for your generous support during the uh, uh, holy season. We had um, some really wonderful services. Last Sunday was spectacular. We had a great time, and uh, we uh, made some improvements to the building and our beautiful stained glass in the tower, and uh, we're... Uh, we paid off our, our indebtedness, so we no longer have a debt. Uh, now we're in an educational process to convince you that just because we've paid off the debt doesn't mean we need to uh, stop giving to the building fund uh, because your, your board of trustees and those who uh, have to deal with these kind of things realize that as we approach uh, the uh, 10 and 15 year mark in the age of our building, certain things will have to be done uh, to maintain it. Uh, eventually, we'll have to re roof, we'll have possibly well work to be done, uh, we'll have painting to be done, and so forth. And rather than keep having emergency after emergency, we'd like to just keep that building fund building as, as it was during the mortgage problem. And uh, that way, we won't have to keep running to you. So if you're used to giving to the building fund and that's part of your budget, uh, don't stop. Uh, Most people already have. Uh, We used to do about $1,700 a week in the building fund, and for the last couple of weeks, it's been less than $300. So uh, uh, it's your church. 
I, you do what you want to do, but I, and, and when the roof goes, I'll be fishing somewhere. So not my problem, Mon, but I just want you to know that uh, uh, what, what we've gotten through for 15 years, we've gotten through by good planning and, and being prepared. So uh, we want you to, uh, to think about that. It's now called the reserve fund instead of the building fund, but your giving would be the same. There's a general fund, a mission fund, and a, and a reserve fund or slash building fund. So uh, keep that in mind as you plan your, uh, your giving. Um, we have a, a group of wonderful people here, and uh, uh, this is a surprise thing. I'm, I, I love surprises. And uh, you'll notice that they all have beautiful red shirts on. I'm going to ask you to come up here and tell us why you're here and what these red shirts are all about and so forth. We have a month. Would you like a mic? Let's do this, because they can't hear you without a mic. Oh, here's another one. Well, I'm, I'm going to be the talk. Good morning. Come on up. Oh, I think we're fine. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Lindsay Collier, and I'm here with uh, some friends. Actually, one is a good friend. She's my wife, Jean. We have Barbara Bickley. And uh, let's see, what is your name? I, everybody knows her, I think, in this congregation, Bonnie Pearson. I'm representing a group here in the villages called the Acknowledging Acts of Kindness Group. And our mission is to promote a culture of kindness in the villages and beyond. And we do this in a number of ways. Some of, some of them are very creative. The, the, oh, that rock. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the, the usual way is we carry around these cards. We call them our kindness cards. There's a little message on the back, thanking them, whoever you've sparked doing something kind, thanking them for their kindness, their positive attitude. We have handed out some 50,000 of these cards already in the villages and all around the country and maybe beyond that as well. Uh, so we do a lot of, I have a lot of cards to leave with you with if you want to take some before you leave. That would be great. Yeah. But the other thing we do is we try to find people who have done exceptionally kind things, who have just shown extraordinary kindness, and every month we try to honor someone, and we usually do this with a surprise of some sort. And there's someone in this congregation that we would like to honor in this way. Leslie Adams, could you come up, please? I, oh, okay. Go. Yeah, well, we, we want to just honor you for the, your kindness. I, I've read so many things about all the things you do with the, the kind of, with the uh, toddler program around here. Work many hours on that. So we have some things we would like to give you. First of all, we have a certificate of kindness uh, that we would like to give you. You can give it to her now. Okay. Shall I read it? Yes, please. The Villages Acknowledging Acts of Kindness Club thanks you for your extraordinary kindness. Your kind acts and positive attitude serve as a model for others to promote a culture of kindness in our community and beyond. Thank you. Wow. And we also have a little gift certificate to give you. I hope you like to eat. Uh, and you, could, you and your husband can go out to eat on us. And we have some flowers as well. You can't leave without having some roses. And I don't know how many hands you have left, but we also have a kindness rock here. You, you can take me. Oh, excuse me. I love it. Bonnie gave me a card well, several months ago, I think. And I care, Bonnie gave me a card several months ago, and I carry it around with me all the time. So I'll wow, it's good. Well, we'll give you some more cards. There's a lot of cards in there as well. So don't just carry it around. Give it to people that you see carrying out some sort of act of kindness. And that's it. Well, I, oh, the book. I forgot. We also want to give you a book. I actually wrote this book, but it's a book called Kindness Rocks, Rocks How to Live a Life of Kindness. I don't think you need this book, actually. But you can pass it on to other people. Thank you so much for all you do. And. You're welcome. Thank you. 
Thank you. you. Isn't this a great group and a great idea? <laughs> and because I know how much work uh, her husband Dick does, uh, she, she needs to share the gift certificate and the flowers with Dick. He's up and down the stairs and carrying boxes and uh, uh, does... Actually, Dick does all the work and Leslie collects all the prizes, so <laughs> that's not true. That's not true. Th and thank you so much for coming and for, for doing that. Okay, just a couple more quick announcements uh, that we want to share with you. Um, we uh, have another uh, breakfast coming up. It's the last one of the season for our mission uh, board. We uh, will have somebody from Alzheimer's, uh, an Alzheimer's organization come and, and speak to us. Uh, this coming month of May is Alzheimer's month for us, and we will be supporting uh, two different groups. One meets at uh, Hope Lutheran Church. We've supported them before. It's called My Time for Free Time. It helps the uh, uh, families of people who are going through the, the trauma of facing Alzheimer's uh, to have some free time, and it, it provides activities for the patients. Uh, also, there's a new group that's forming, and they're doing a, a, a seminar, I believe it's in Wildwood, uh, for families, instructional thing uh, for them, and we're going to help to, we're actually, we're actually financing uh, and supporting making that happen. Uh, so a lot of you have gone through this in your families or, or in your neighborhood, and uh, so it's an important month for us to, uh, to support, and I... I uh, that's coming up for our monthly mission for the month of, for the month of May. And uh, our breakfast will be on May the 11th, and it's $5, as it always is, which just cause, covers the food. And tickets are going to be on sale this morning and uh, each morning up until the 11th of May. Uh, so if you want to pick up a ticket or two, uh, invite friends. If you know somebody who's going through uh, dealing with Alzheimer's or their family is, invite them to breakfast, pay for their breakfast. They'll hear a good speaker and maybe get some encouragement at the same time. So uh, that's, that's coming up this, uh, this <coughs> uh, May the 11th on, on Wednesday. Uh, also, uh, we've, had a couple, we've had a couple of, uh, of uh, deaths in the church family, uh, members of, of families within our church. And I wanted to uh, draw your attention to that. We have a slide to go up. Uh, the first one I wanted to mention was uh, Danny Sabo's brother, uh, Paul. Paul Vendura uh, passed away. And uh, our sympathies to Danny and uh, his family. And also last Monday, uh, Ray Turner's brother-in-law, who we've been praying for on our prayer list for quite some time, John. Uh, John passed away uh, last Monday on the 18th. And so our sympathies to Ray and to his family. And sometimes, um, if, you're, if you're like me, um, my dad died 40-some years ago, and every anniversary of his death is, uh, is another time for reflection and some, somewhat for sadness as well, because I miss him so much. Uh, but um, uh, Bob Landry lost his dad. Uh, this is the second anniversary uh, of that. And I wanted to mention uh, Bob and his dad, William, uh, who passed away two years ago. So uh, we remember all of these folks. And the candle that uh, burns on the altar, uh, side of the altar this morning is there in honor and in memory of uh, these families and of their loss. So would you observe a moment of silence uh, for uh, these who have passed away for, for all of them? Heavenly Father, as much as we know that those who leave us come to be with you and that their circumstances are certainly better than they were when they were here with us sick and, uh, and struggling and in pain, but you know how, how hard it is for us to let go. You know the pain of grief and uh, all that it does to us. So we pray for these families who've lost loved ones and who remember uh, the loss that still eats at them and, uh, and causes them pain, uh, and we ask that you'd Bring your peace, your love, and uh, the assurance of that uh, place which you have prepared for, for all of our loved ones. We ask that you'd bring that to them now in Jesus' name. Amen. Kevin, I think we have, uh, we have a new singer, don't we, not today, do we not? 
Jill Heyman Aponte is here, sitting in the front row with her guitar, and we're looking forward to her singing, and she's going to be singing some of my favorite country, well, at least one of my favorite country singer's songs, Ricky Skaggs, and uh, he, he did some great Christian stuff. And I, Really? I didn't, I didn't, I missed that. I didn't know he was there. Yeah. yeah. He was great. And, and I love his singing he does with the whites as well. They do a lot of gospel. Yeah. I've gotten a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of spiritual growth from that. Yeah. I, I think in his latter career, he's become more known for his Christian work than, than for his popular country work. But, so I'm looking forward to your song. Kevin O'Connell and the Prelude. Sorry for the thump. Good morning. Good morning. Um, my husband, Ed, who's over there, and I both would uh, like to thank uh, the congregation for making us feel so welcome this morning. I appreciate that. Uh, this song is also Ricky's Gags. Oh, he's not listening. Sorry.
Traveling down life's road, it's not too hard to see. The writing is on the wall if we take time to read. Children are hungry and millions are in need. We need to take the time to plant just one seed, the seed of love. One seed of love can help a family who's in danger. One seed of love can make a friend out of a stranger. One seed of love can grow and grow to fill each need. We can grow a mountain of love. From just one seed. What are we here for if not to help our neighbor? We need to forget ourselves and be more like the Savior. He had compassion for the sick, the lame, the blind. He grew a mountain of love, one seed at a time. The seed of love, one seed of love can help a family who's in danger. One seed of love can make a friend out of a stranger. One seed of love can grow and grow to fill each need. We can grow a mountain of love from just one seed. One day many years ago on a cross at Calvary, the greatest seed that was ever sown was sown for you and me. The seed of love, one seed of love can help a family who's in danger. One seed of love can make a friend out of a stranger. One seed of love can grow and grow to fill each need. We can grow a mountain of love from just one seed. We can grow a mountain of love from just one seed. That was a nice song. Sorry. I love I, lo I love the words to that. That's great. <laughs> That's great. Thank you very much. This is the day the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We worship him together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The good shepherd calls to us the sheep of his hand. He, hears his voice and knows. he invites us to drink from the quiet pools. He calls us to green meadows in which to feed. Most of all, he calls us to follow him. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Shepherd, lead us much. We need thy tender care. In thy pleasant pastures, feed us for our use. Thy folds prepare. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, thou hast brought us thine we are blessed Jesus blessed Jesus 
Thou hast brought us thine we are. We are thine, do thou befriend us, be the guardian of our way. Keep thy flock from sin defend us, seek us when we go astray. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, hear, oh, hear us when we pray. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, hear, oh, hear us when we pray. Let us pray together. Enfold us in your love this morning, O Holy One. Embrace us with your care as we gather as community to praise you. We gather in joy and thanksgiving that you are our God. Surprise us. Move mightily among and in us today. Amen. So here's a song y'all know. <clears throat> There's a land that is fairer than day. And by faith we can see it afar. For the Father waits over the way To prepare us a dwelling place there In the sweet by and by We shall meet on that beautiful shore In the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore. We shall sing on that beautiful shore. The melodious songs of the blessed. And our spirit shall sorrow no more. Not a sigh for the blessing of rest. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. To our bountiful Father above, we will offer our tribute of praise for the glorious gift of His love and the blessings that hallow our days in the sweet by and by. We shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore thank you, you may be seated beloved in the Lord let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. We confess to you, our good shepherd, and before one another, that we have sinned. You have good things in store for us, but we balk and lament and do not listen to your voice. We are drawn away by the sights and sounds around us. We worry about the quality of the pasture and the depth of the water instead of trusting in you. When you call us to follow, 
We prefer to stay where we are. Forgive us and bring us once more into your fold and teach us to trust you and follow you. Amen. The Good Shepherd never deserts the flock. He desires to bring us to a land of good pasture and abundant water. He desires to fulfill all the deepest needs of our souls. God forgives us and calls us to follow our shepherd with faithfulness and joy. Somebody's praying I can feel it Somebody's praying for me Mighty hands are guiding me To protect me from what I can't see Lord Many miles ahead till I get home Still I'm safely kept before your throne Lord, I believe Lord, I believe Your angels are watching over me well, I've walked the barren wilderness Where my pillow was a stone And I have cursed the darkest desert Where no light has ever shone Still I went on Because there was someone Who was down on I thank you for those people praying all this time for me. Somebody's praying. I can feel it. Somebody's praying. Mighty hands are guiding me To protect me from what I can't see Lord, I believe Lord, I believe That somebody's praying for Somebody's praying for me.
You don't need to feel bad about that popping sound. If we didn't have some kind of a microphone or electronic problem, we'd think God had forsaken us. <laughs> Is that not true? Yes. Yeah. That was a beautiful, beautiful song. Thank you so much. Um, we pray each week for those going through the awful time that they are in the Ukraine, and I ask you to continue to do that. Um, a couple of weeks ago, we, we made a congregational gift uh, through Samaritan's Purse to try to help, and I've been kind of following all the things that Samaritan Purse is doing over there, and uh, Franklin Graham's been there, and they, they've got hospitals set up, they've got feeding programs set up, and I mean, it's like kind of spitting into the wind because it's just such a massive, massive, horrible problem. Uh, but please continue to pray where you see the opportunities to, uh, to give and to, to help. Uh, please take those opportunities. Uh, but by the grace of God, there go we. Uh, so someday if we fall into that horrible situation, we hope the rest of the world comes to feed and help us. So uh, pray for them, the, the, the children, the families, the the utter destruction of whole cities is just, just beyond my comprehension. I can't even think about it. I don't think we've seen anything like this since, uh, since Hitler moved across Europe. I mean, it's just awful, uh, just awful. So please pray for these people. Um, while that goes on, the normal things, if you want to call them normal, that happen within our own lives and within our own church families, as we talked about earlier, people who are, are grieving at the loss of loved ones. Uh, we've had people who've been going through surgeries, and uh, um, fortunately, I haven't heard of any more cases of the dreaded COVID virus. Uh, thank goodness that, that seems to have uh, uh, subsided. Thank goodness our prayers have been answered on that. But um, uh, just a lot of things. But we also ought to thank God when something good happens, right? So uh, uh, in the old, the old churches I used to attend uh, years ago, you call those praise reports. And so I got a praise report for you. After a whole month of not being able to stand on his feet without pain, this past week, my buddy Dave Zecker played golf for the first time. How about that? God, get, God gets lots of pray, prayers about golf, and Jesus' name is mentioned an awful lot on the golf course. Uh, but this, this, is a, this is a good thing. This is a good thing. So we're, we're glad you're back on your feet, Dave. Thank you. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, show us a little child in the rubble of a Ukrainian city. Show us a family struggling as they walk away from the home they've known for years. Show us those who are totally innocent, laying in hospital beds, or worse yet, their bodies laying in the streets of their cities. Help our consciences to be pricked. Help us to be aware and to care. Somehow, Heavenly Father, pour your Holy Spirit upon this war and upon those who wage it and allow peace to come. We celebrate your Son as the Prince of Peace. May he return and, and rule and reign and bring about peace. It is our prayer, our hope, and every time we see the hurt and the pain, it becomes a more intense prayer. We pray for those in our church family who've lost loved ones, who are going through the difficulty of separation. Encourage us with the promise of your son that he has gone to prepare a place for us. Encourage us with the knowledge that all things work together for good, even our physical death. And you have a time and a place and a wonder to present to us after we've shed this mortality and take on your immortality. We thank you for being present in this service today. 
We thank you for the move of your Holy Spirit. We pray that we not leave this place the same way we came. That we will understand that as we go, you go with us. That you are always there for us. That we don't need a building or a service or music or an offering plate or anything else to come to you. That you are always there. And we thank you for that. And on this, the Sunday after your son was celebrated as rising from the dead, we celebrate still that hope that it represents, that resurrection power that it gives to us. And we are truly, truly grateful. Bring to each one who is here this day and to those that are watching over their computers the knowledge that all you need do is ask and you will come. All we need do is present ourselves to you and you will receive us. Our sins are washed away. Our pain is taken. And you present us with new life whenever we desire it. For all that you have done, we are so very grateful. And for all that you are yet to do, we look forward with great expectancy. In the name of the one who taught us to say when we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Oh, no, 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 no. Where are the smiles? <laughs> this is the happiest time in the service. The Lord loves a cheerful giver. That's much better. The ushers will now wait on you for the receiving of our morning tithes and offerings. Heavenly Father, for the ability to give, we are most grateful. Now we bring to your throne of grace these our gifts. We ask that you would bless them, multiply them, use them to further the work of your Son, 
that his love, his mercy, his healing, his forgiveness might be made known throughout this community and around the world. In his name we pray. Amen. In your bulletin, it says that uh, Jill is going to be singing in the garden. She's not going to be singing in the garden. I am not. No. Uh, Even with that loud popping noise, we're going to be singing softly and tenderly. Yes, we are. (laughs) It's a medley. Love Lifted Me's in there, too. Do you guys know Love Lifted Me? Yes. Yeah, well, when that time comes, and I'll let you know when that is, I'd love for you to sing with me. Not yet. So and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you.
reading today is Psalms 50, 7 through 15, and 1 Corinthians 6, 19 through 20. Hear, O my people, and I will speak. O Israel, and I will testify against you. I am God, your God. I will not rebuke you for your sacrifices or your burnt offerings, which are continually before me. I will not take a bull from your house, nor goats from your folds, for every beast of the forest is mine and the cattle on a thousand hills. I know all the birds of the mountains and the wild beasts of the field are mine. If you, I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the world is mine in all its fullness. Will I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? Offer to God thanksgiving and pay your vows to the Most High. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. First Corinthians. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own, for you were bought at a price? Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. If, if you're wondering where you could send your money for um, the Ukraine, I had the extreme pleasure last night of participating in a fundraiser and for a group here in the villages called YOLO. You only live once, and they call it YOLO for others. So if you know anybody in that club, you can contact them, and they'll make sure your money gets to the right place. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel his mighty power and his grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place surely the presence of the Lord is in this place I can feel his mighty power and his grace I can hear the brush of angels wings I see glory on each Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel His mighty power and His grace. I can hear the brush of angels. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You may be seated. During the announcements, I forgot to mention to you, I don't know how I forgot this because I've been working on it for a couple of months now. Uh, there are five churches that have gotten together. Uh, my buddy Ben Simmons got me involved in this, and uh, we have a revival, and we, we're going to be in a, uh, a tent. There's two tents. One is ministry tent, and the other is uh, for the services. <clears throat> it starts this Wednesday down at Brown's Farmer's Market in the field, and uh, Sometimes for the life of me, I can't figure out why you'd want to go out in the middle of a field in a tent when you've got a beautiful church to meet in, but whatever. So, uh, but we're going to, uh, we're going to do it, and uh, we're hoping that being out there will bring people in who normally wouldn't come and bring some of us who need to come uh, there. Uh, we've got music. We've got people that have uh, had their lives blessed and, and changed uh, that are going to talk to us about that. Uh, we've got about 
seven or eight, I think, different ministries, everything from uh, marriage encounter groups to our infant toddler pantry that are going to be in the ministry tent uh, with uh, displays. Um, we, uh, ben, ben and I are doing the wrap-up on Friday, on, excuse me, on Saturday night, starts at six o'clock. So uh, don't, don't wear sandals, but wear shoes unless you want your little toes eaten up by red ants. I, I, we don't know that there are any, but I, I'm, I'm worried about that. I worry about the details. So anyway, we're going we're gonna to be getting together uh, this week, Wednesday, Thursday, Wednesday, setting up Thursday night and Friday night uh, uh, with the program. And then Saturday all day is family day. We've got actually some of those blow-up things the kids can jump around on, uh, and different things like that for, for families, and uh, lots of good music. Uh, like I said, <clears throat> Ben's got some really good songs that uh, he's going to sing. So uh, you hear me all the time, but you know, never never get tired of hearing Ben sing. So uh, come out if you would, please. Uh, there's plenty of parking; it's free, and uh, I don't I don't even think, as far as I know, we haven't even planned on taking an offering. It's all been it's all been God's provided and it's all paid for. So. Uh, Come out. We've never we've never done this before, and to get five churches to cooperate on anything is is a miracle in itself. So if nothing else happens, that's been a miracle, and uh, we've had we've had a, a wonderful time getting this ready. So again, it's this this the end of this week, Thursday, Friday, and then all day Saturday. We ended up on Saturday night. It's from six to eight. <clears throat> I haven't done this for a long, long time, so I'm I'm uh, I might be a little rusty, but we'll see. So I hope you'll come. May the words of my mouth and meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O God. I wanted to take you into the Bible today, and I wanted you to to see how it applies to your life, how God in in the characters in the Bible and in the circumstances and scenes in the Bible, it really playing out like a movie for you, uh, a learning experience, so that you can understand your life and what God expects of you and what God can do through you uh, as, as these stories unfold. And to do that, I want to talk about two Bible characters, and they are primo Bible characters. They are, they are the, the stars of the 66 books of the Bible. And the first one is an Old Testament character, and that's King David. King David, you know, wrote those beautiful psalms like the one you heard this morning, uh, like the one you love, and everybody says uh, uh, at a funeral, I want the 23rd psalm. You know, and they think because, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death is in there, that the 23rd Psalm is a psalm to read at a funeral. It's actually a psalm of life. God is providing through the, through the waters and in the green fields, and, uh, and he's walking with you uh, through, through life, and he never leaves you. It's a, it's a psalm of life. Uh, and it was written by this, this great king of Israel, perhaps, the, uh, I, I think unquestionably, the greatest king uh, that Israel ever knew. As a matter of fact, he's such a great king that when we get to the Savior, we get to the Messiah, he is the son of David. Messiah is the son of David. So, as you look at the, uh, the story of David, you go back to his beginnings, you go back to when he was a boy, and if you think about yourself when you were a child, you know, you were awkward, you were ill at ease, you had doubts, and you had fears, and all the things that come with, with growing up, being a little child, becoming an awkward teenager, and so forth, well, David was just like us. And so when Goliath appears on the scene and they're looking for somebody to go out against Goliath, when uh, they're looking for a king of Israel, they go and they, they look to the sons of Jesse and they're looking for, for a king and they look at all of David's brothers because they were big hunks. They were tough guys. They were bigger and stronger and smarter. And little David... David is kind of just like us. He's awkward. His job is to take care of the sheep. He's out in the shepherd's field, and you might see him playing the flute or playing the harp and taking care of the sheep and, and walking around out there making sure he didn't step in anything. You know, he was, he was the shepherd. Nothing really surprising or great about King David when he was little David. And it reminds us that that really is us. Without the call of God on our life, without the anointing of God on our life, without us giving our life to him, 
We're just like little David, dodging sheep pies and playing the flute in the field that nobody can hear us and, and dealing with the tough things of life and having everybody pass over top of us because they don't think we are anything. Well, people didn't think David was anything, but God did. As a matter of fact, later the Bible says that he was a man after God's own heart. And even though David made a lot of mistakes, probably as a child and later as an adult, did awful things, God still loved him, God still forgave him, God still used him. So this, this little shepherd boy, out in the fields, taking care of stinky sheep, is the beginnings of the king of all of Israel. Not only is he the beginnings of the king of the, and the king of all of Israel, but he is also the forerunner. He is also the beginnings. He is also the lineage of the savior of the world. Through David, through David comes Jesus. And we go on to the, to the New Testament. And you know the story because it's everybody's favorite time of year. It's Christmas time. And we go to Bethlehem, and this little baby is born, and tradition says he's either born in this cave where they kept animals, or some stable or, or shack out back of, behind the inn where, where they kept the animals, the donkeys. And, the, and once again, we get this image of stinky animals. I don't know what the gospel writers and the Bible writers were, were thinking about, but they, they seem to love to put... The, the seed of God's glory in the middle of a stinky barn. So here comes this stable in Bethlehem and the birth of this baby, and we celebrate it every year, silent night, holy night, the skies and the stars and, and the animals and all of this. What do we have? We have this helpless baby. Oh, he was the king of kings and the Lord of lords. He was the wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. He was all those things encapsulated in that little tiny baby. But he was still just a little tiny baby. He was just like you and I, helpless and awkward and starting out and totally in need of his father. His earthly mother took care of him. His father, uh, earthly father took care of him. And we can, we can let our minds wander with these stories. I, I love to do this. If I go back to the Old Testament, I can, I can see David having tussles with his brothers and I can see him chasing after sheep that got away from him and I can see him being disgusted with the whole stinky mess. And when it comes to Jesus, I can see him growing up. He, uh, he goes to Egypt and he comes back and the Bible says that he was obedient to his parents and he grew in wisdom and stature in favor with God and man. In other words, he, he grew just like all the rest of us. And I can see this, this little 12-year-old kid with his broom in the carpenter shop with his dad and he's sleeping out the sawdust. And I can see he probably missed the corners and Joseph said, hey, you missed the spot. Did your dad ever do that? My dad was always finding spots I missed. And I legitimately missed a lot of spots. I remember one time, uh, I don't know, I, I'm sure Jesus was much, much better than I was. Uh, wouldn't take much. But anyway, he, uh, he probably never did to his dad, Joseph, what I would do to my dad. My dad was really smart, but I, and I, and, and I, I probably never really put one over on him. I always thought that I did. But like we would go trout fishing and uh, we'd come home with a stringer of trout and, and we'd go out in the backyard and we'd put some stuff down on the picnic table and we'd clean, we'd clean the fish. And my dad would say to me, you know how to do this? I'd say, no, dad. He'd say, okay, well, you take the fish, and you cut the head off, and cut the tail off, and you, just, and you scale it, and you do this. And I'd watch, and he'd say, okay. And he'd put another one down, and he'd say, you got that? I'd say, I don't, I don't think so. <laughs> so he said, all right, one more time. Cut the tail. Put it, put it you got that? Almost, but I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm not sure, Dad. By the time I got it, the fish were all cleaned. 
And I got a feeling that I thought I put one over on him and he knew I wouldn't do it right, so he'd rather do it himself anyway, so it was okay. But can't you just see Jesus doing that in the carpenter shop? He's working with his dad. He's learning how to do these things. He's learning how to do the tools and all of that. You know, we think of Jesus out there feeding the 5,000 and raising the kid from the dead and, and all the wonderful, amazing miracles in the Bible. And those things, I believe with all my heart, those things are true and they happen. But I, I also believe there's a lot of story around the story. Uh, they used to, in the Old Testament, they called it the hedge around the Torah, but there's story around the story. And I think Jesus, you know, was just like us in a lot of ways. And by design, he was just like us. So that you and I would know that no matter how many times we have messed up, no matter how many times we have failed, uh, no matter how menial the task seemed, no matter how many sheep pies we got to walk around and not step in the middle of, uh, no matter what happens in our life, God's right there. And he has a plan for us. He has a purpose for us. We are not, we are not accidents. We are not wandering generalities, as Zig Ziglar used to say. We are meaningful specifics. God created you for a reason. And you say, yeah, but this happened in my life, and right now I don't feel good, and, and I, I get sick, and I'm old, and you know, things don't go right anymore. And that, you know, Stop looking at what you don't have and start looking at what you do have. Stop worrying about what, what is yet to be and understand that you have been so blessed. You have had so much. You have gone so far. If you go back to when you were a kid, think how many people were around you when you were a youngster, a young girl, a young boy who thought, they're not going to amount to anything. They're awkward. They're not too bright. They think they're brighter than they really are. This person is headed for trouble, but God saw something in you, and God brought you to this moment, to this place, and he is still alive and, and influencing and touching your life and, and making you and molding and shaping you into what he wants you to be. You are still his clay on that potter's wheel, and, and he's still forming you. Do you have problems? Of course you do. Did David have problems? Absolutely. Did Jesus go through tough times? They ran him out of Nazareth. They spit on him. They said, can any good thing come from Nazareth? You know, Jesus didn't have an easy time of it either. We think we should have an easy time. You know, the, the king of Israel and the king of all the universe, you know, uh, we can understand how they should have a problem, but we can't understand why we have the slightest little problem. And when we do, we think God has forsaken us. Jesus had to go to the cross, be nailed there, bleeding and dying before he said, Father, why hast thou forsaken me? And he didn't say it as King of kings and Lord of lords. He said it because he had all of your problems and mine on top of him, weighing down on him. And he was dying under the pain of our mistakes before he would feel forsaken. So as you approach this day and the days that are still ahead of you, as you think about the, the good times that are still there for you and the bad times you're in, inevitably going to go through, know that you are just like David. You are a king of Israel, a queen of Israel. And you are just like Jesus. You are one with him. He has come to, to be one with you. So you are a, a son or a daughter of the Most High God along with his son. You're not the son of God, but we are all sons and daughters of God. We are his children, children of the Most High God. And because of, because of that, no matter what comes against us, no matter what is still ahead, sickness, cancer, heart disease, the nursing home, the, the loneliness of separation, whatever it is, we can make it. We can make it because we've been there like little David and we've been there like little Jesus and we've grown up with the problems and we've faced it all and God has promised us, I'll never leave you, I'll never forsake you, I am with you always. If God is missing, it's not his fault. He has never moved. You have. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are the most high God. You are the one who loves us and cares for us in the midst of it all. You were there when we were a, a little child messing our own pants and, and failing and getting into trouble. And, and you were there when we were teenagers and trying awkwardly to, to grow up into men and women. And, and you've been there through the problems of life, the failures that perhaps were our own fault. You've never been away from us. You've never left us. And you are in this place. You are around us and within us. And as we leave here today, you'll go with us. If we'll just have you, you'll go with us and you'll help us through the week. For all that you've done, we're grateful. And for all that you're yet to do, we look forward with great expectancy. In Jesus' name, amen. Gentle shepherd, come and lead us, for we need you to help us find our way. Gentle shepherd, come and feed us, for we need your strength from day to day. There's no other we can turn to who can help us face another day. Gentle shepherd, come and lead us for we need you to help us find our way.
Well, the guy, Chris Ensley, Chris Ensley, and we love it, so we're going again. Again. What's this caught on? Get it off. Get it off. It's caught on my sweater. It's caught on my sweater. I can feel it. It's caught in a zipper thing, isn't it? Thank you. Bless your heart. Thank you. Thank you. I think I'll turn it the other way. Thank you very much. Here's a hug.